Vite, vite, vite. I'm Akuru. Yo, 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 guys. Welcome back in today. Today, we're going to be talking about the last queen of Rwanda. The last queen of Rwanda was Rosaeri Chunda. Rosaeri Chunda was born in 1928 in the eastern region, which is now the Ramagana district. Her father, Martin Gatsinzi, and mother, Magwindi Agiri, would have five children. Her father and mother would eventually move the family to the Mutara area. At the age of 14, she would marry King Mutara III. Even before becoming royalty, the queen was said to be very shy, humble, and generous. The queen belonged to the Tutsi class, or people. Once becoming queen, many people would call her the people's queen. This is due to some of the population believing she was good in nature and cared for the people of the kingdom. The king's servants would speak highly of her, and people of the palace neighborhood would as well. People, from time to time, would come by the palace asking to see her. She would tell her servants to let them in. Once they would enter, she would serve them milk. She was said to respect everyone and treat everyone fairly. Accounts of her outside of Rwanda should be noted as well. American writer John Gunther would visit Rwanda in 1953 and interview the king. After the interview with the king, Gunther would speak with the queen. Gunther would describe the queen very fluent in French, not well-traveled, while also being a shy person. In 1959, the king would be killed mysteriously before the Rwandan revolution. His brother would then take the throne. The new king, King Kigili, would rule for only one year till 1961. He would clash with the Belgium colonial power, which had colonized Rwanda along with Germany. Under Belgian rule, the French language was administered as the language of use before 1961. Once the king would be exiled from Rwanda, he would move to Kenya, then Uganda. Eventually, the king would settle in the suburbs of Washington, D.C. in the United States in 1992. He would die at the age of 80. Ethnic group tension would rise as well. Wanda has three groups, known as the Tutsi people, Hutu people, and Twa people. In 1961, the Rwandan revolution would take place. This revolution, also known as the Hutu revolution or the wind of destruction, was a time when ethnic tension and violence boiled over. From 1959 to 1961, the Tutsi and Hutu would clash, leading to death in the country. In 1994, the Rwandan Civil War would lead to around 100 days of the Tutsi group and some Twa and Hutu being killed by Hutu militias. This would lead to the current president since 2000, Paul Kagame, a Tutsi military leader and politician who led the Rwandan Patriot Front. He would go on to defeat the Hutu forces and end the Rwandan genocide in 1994. After 1961, the queen would be made to leave the palace and continue to live in the Butare province in Rwanda. The queen would still be very loved by the people. She would go on to live with her mother in a modest house, much different from the palace. For some time, the region was safe from the genocide, but eventually it would catch the region. On April 19, 1994, interim president Theodore arrived in the area. He announced that the Tutsi, who were known as the royal class, to get out and work and to get out of their comfort zones and work. The Tutsi were known as a royal class and the Hutu as the working class. The Tutsi would traditionally tend to livestock, 
while farmers who farmed crops were known as Hutus. Most Rwandans were classified as Hutu due to them farming crops. Once cattle became more valuable than crops, the people who owned them would become the local elite and known as the Tutsi. On April 20th, around 11 a.m., 2nd Lieutenant Pierre Bizimana would command soldiers to invade the queen's home. The queen and six others would be kidnapped, leaving her bedridden mother behind. The queen and others would be took behind the ethnographic museum where they were shot to death. Many stated that this was the beginning of mass fear in the country and the region. Many at the time believed that a high ranked captain and head of intelligence and military sent out the order. The captain was caught in 2009 and sentenced in Rwanda in 2012. The soldiers would soon then return to loot the queen's home and two days later, her mother was killed. Her brother, who fled the country two years before, would learn of the death two days later in shock. All this was known due to one little girl who survived the story of the murderers. A priest would request to the mayor of the city that the queen's body be recovered. Once recovered, her body was to be buried in the yard next to her house. Her body was eventually moved to Nyanza, where she rests beside her husband. On April 20th of every year, her families, friends, and relatives gather at her resting place to pay her respects. Please like the video, turn on the bell notification down there so you can get all my videos. Also subscribe so you can keep up with the channel. Like me on all social medias, which is Africa Network, which is Instagram, Twitter, SoundCloud, Facebook, TikTok, and Snapchat. Each one teach one. Always love each other. Always learn from each other. And yo guys, until next time, peace. One love.